Hey, welcome back. This is part two in a small series of videos where we're making the Traveler Shield from Breath of the Wild. In the last video, if you watched it, we hammered out a shield boss out of a piece of brass. In order to do that, we also had to make a dishing stump. In this video, we're gonna make the handle for the shield. We're gonna use half inch square steel tube and the mounting plates will be cut out of quarter inch steel. When I'm finished with this project, I'll update the video description with the plans and also you'll see links for the different materials or tools that I used. So we cut it here, cut a little V groove, bend it and weld it. I'm just cutting this with a jigsaw and a metal cutting blade. So right to the edge here, and then I should be able to bend this. Look at that. See those red lines on the drawing? That's the curve that we have to put in to the top of the handle. I'm gonna try heating it up and I uh, have a little gap here. I'm just gonna be hammering it down. You can get these torches at like Home Depot, Lowe's. They're not that expensive. All right, now we just uh, strengthen this with a few welds. Okay, this is the welder I'm gonna be using and this is not my forte. I know almost nothing about welding. In case you're wondering, let me show you a little bit about this. There's a spool of wire in there and it goes through here when you pull the trigger, it feeds. There's the trigger there. It feeds all the way through and you can see it coming out the end here. The other part of this is this, you know, you might see these, uh, you might be used to it on your car, your jumpers, that clamps right here. And so it completes the circuit. The electricity goes through here, and if you're welding this spot, the wire's gonna touch it, and it's gonna make a spark. That's how it works. So I was double checking the right angle here. You gotta make sure that you bend this first, and then cut these. I think that would be easier, because, uh, once you bend it, it brings the ends of the legs closer together. So I have a bigger gap here than initially. There we go. All right, let's weld. I don't ever pride myself on my welding because I've never really done it. Again, I know almost nothing about it. So let me get the other side. Yeah, that well is about as ugly as I think it's gonna get. Let's do this other side. <clears throat> and uh, you can see how much of a gap there is now. So bend this first and then cut out these angles.
Okay, that one seems better. I mean, there's a lot of grinding. Okay, there's the welds there. Yes, obviously I could have done a lot better, but again, I really have no experience welding. So I'd say this is good enough. <laughs> Now, normally I'd use like a belt sander and a file or something to get rid of these uh, horrible welds, but I just picked up this grinder, so it's going to make it a lot easier. Let's try it out. You know what? It's not bad. I think it's coming out okay. Let's see what this pack can do. Now I got this sanding wheel on. Let's give it a go. All right, not good, but you know what? Not the worst. If we take a look at this drawing, there's a little bit of a curve in the handle. You can see that before it meets the mounting plates. So I'm gonna heat these up and just put a little bit of a bend in it. It's really subtle. Alright, there's a little bit of a flare in there, but all that work and I ruined the joint, so I'm going to have to uh, weld these back again. But you know what? I need to practice. So, here we go again. It's not that easy, but uh, if you don't mind slop, you can do it. <laughs> There you have it, there's the handle. Two slight kinks at the end, slight curve at the top. Next we're gonna cut out these mounting plates out of quarter inch steel. It's this stuff here. There was a struggle cutting through metal this thick with this jigsaw, but it's, you know, it is doable and these are small parts. So I got to grind that down and grind this edge down there to make it all symmetrical. And then uh, I'll cut this one out. So now it's just a matter of rounding over the edges with the belt sander, and this is good. So I'll make the second one now. You know, cutting this edge wasn't so bad. It really only took mm, maybe uh, a minute. Ow, oh, hot. A minute, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, something like that. Yeah, on those small edges, grindings quicker.
Nice. Good. It's a lot of work. Next, we round over all these edges with the belt sander just to knock them down and smooth everything out. Here are the mounting plates for the handle and I just finished sanding down the ends of the handle so that they are even. And now we just weld it like that. Yeah, that looks all right. I better drill the holes now while I have easy access to them. But uh, I'm happy with this as long as these weld. I'll have to make it really strong because this is definitely a weak point there, especially with somebody who doesn't know how to weld well. Weld well like myself. But this is this is coming along fine. I'm happy. I scratched a line in this metal here so I can line up the holes and everything, in case you're wondering. Otherwise, if you don't, it's it's kind of tricky to uh, to get it all lined up. <clears throat> Wow, that is just gross looking. I can tell that it's not very well. Oh my gosh, is that disgusting. All right, here it is so far. What do you guys think? I want to keep this a little bit rough and ugly, so I'm not going to clean everything up absolutely perfect. But uh, I really like it. I think it came out nice. I rounded these over, make them a little bit softer. And uh, next we just have to prime and paint it. Then we can wrap some leather around the grip here. All right, up next is the leather wrap for the handle. And you can see it's kind of vague on the game what it actually, how it's actually assembled. So that allows us to do it however we want. And I figured we're gonna do stitching around this side. We'll just keep it real simple. Uh, this is the leather I'm gonna use. It's fairly thick so that it feels like you got something nice to grab. Um, and I did some tests on different um, threads. This is wax string. This is a different shade of wax string. This is black. And uh, I didn't like these as much as I like this uh, sinew. And uh, it's fake sinew. But it's also wax. It just looks so much nicer. This leather is the bottom of my old high school Jansport backpack. It actually worked really nice. I do like this, but um, this leather is a little thicker, so that's what I'm going to use. This sinew is cheap and for the length that we need, it's about three and a half feet you need to wrap this much of a handle. And uh, let me take, where's the measurements that I came up with? Okay. Um, well, we'll get into that while 
we're doing this. So let's cut that out. So I need a rectangle that's 48 millimeters. And if you're using half inch square pipe, these will be your measurements as well. 48 millimeters by 11 and a half centimeters. That's actual dimension. So let me add, a, we'll just go straight to 12. So before we punch holes for the stitches, we're going to mark where they go, and that's going to be six millimeters in, and about four in from this side, and nine millimeters apart. So let's do this one. Now we're ready to hammer. You'll need to mount this to something to secure it while you're working on it. It just makes it so much easier. Getting the leather wet makes it a little more flexible and easier to work with, but it does also close up the holes after a while. And make sure you mount your work onto something. Otherwise, you'll never be able to pull it tight. Okay, so let's even it out. All right. And this is the sinew, fake sinew. And we need about three and a half feet. And don't be cheap with this stuff because you don't want to run out in the middle of your stitch. So give yourself a little bit extra. You need a needle on both ends, so you'll need two, ne uh, two needles, like that. Okay, we're going to start going in the first hole from the outside. on both sides. Okay, so your first hole, like that. And then pull these so the ends of the string, it's gonna be off camera, but I'm gonna match these up so that we're right in the middle of this three and a half foot piece. So it's off camera, I have the end There we go. So that's the center. So we went in with both needles through this hole, straight across and out the other side. Now you just don't want to twist up this stuff or last thing you want to do is put this through here on the other one because it's going to really mess you up when you pull it tight. Okay. Let's go out this hole. And this is how we start. Okay. We can pull it. Here's the problem. Let me get a hook. You see this went over the top. So we need to bring that over there to the front. And then we can pull it tight. Okay. Keep it real tight. Now we go diagonally from this hole to this hole. And if you are really a stickler and compulsive about how it looks, you're going to want to keep this in the same pattern so that 
this stitch always overlaps the one underneath. We'll go diagonally to this one. Okay, so we have a little cross here. Now underneath, they cut straight across. On top is diagonal, underneath is straight across. So we're going from this hole straight across to this hole, just like we did on the first stitch. And again, try not to go through the sinew on the other side. Go through the hole, not the sinew. This causes trouble when you're pulling it to tighten it. There we go. Okay. Now we go diagonal again. This one first. That would be my left side first. We go back over and I diagonal with the right. When you get towards the end, the things that happen are you start wearing off the wax, your fingers hurt, and the holes start to close up on you. Other than that, there's really not much to think or worry about. Okay, so we went diagonal, now we're underneath. So that means we go straight across. Straight across there, and this one, opposite side, there. Can never grab that one. We go in from the top. We go straight across. So that's basically it. We're going to continue this process all the way up and then I'll show you how to tie it off at the end. We're on the last stitch here. And this is where we're gonna straighten everything out if the leather is twisted or anything. Make sure it's in the right spot. And to tighten all these up, stick this in there, yank it, and then you gotta follow it through. So same side on all of these and we can get out some excess. Now we'll do, uh, let's see, this one. So now we're here at the very end. I'm going to cross this one over. Pull that so it opens up the hole. Cross this one over through this hole. And then it's just a square knot underneath. And a square knot is right over left, left over right. And again, make sure you don't have any slack here. Let me pull this a little tighter. There we go. That's good enough. Okay, right over left. I 
and left over right. So that's tied underneath. And you snip it with some excess. And then we're going to tuck that excess down inside the best we can. So get some sort of hook or something. And I don't, I'm not expecting much room to be able to do this. But we're going to just see if we can weasel it down inside. I'm going to have to move this to a better angle. Okay, so this excess, we're just going to shove it down inside. And that's it. And here's a look at the finished piece. It's got nice leather all around. I like the variation in the color. The texture of it's nice. It's got a good grip to it. It's not slippery or anything like that. And I like the big stitching at the bottom. You could put the holes closer together if you wanted to hide the stitches more. I think that looks pretty neat. And this does not, if you're wondering, move around. You can't spin it. It is really on there tight. Let's take a look at what's next. We have the boss done and the handle now. Now the boss was easy compared to the handle. The handle was a little bit more work. Now we have to do this forearm strap. It's a belt that goes through here and it's um, held down by these two uh, pieces of metal. If I had better tools, I'd cut this out, but I, I don't want to use the jigsaw on this. So I'm just going to do, make these out of wood and that should be just fine. So your, your arm goes in there and it holds it down. I believe these are called in arms, in arms, maybe at least if you have two of them. Is one of them and an arm? I don't know. But I think that's the technical name for it. Um, let's uh, jump to the tool bench and cut some of these out. I almost forgot. It does have a little bit of a rise. Right here. So we have two of them cut out and I'm going to clean up the edges just a little bit with a belt sander. When I use tools like this or the scroll saw, you can still use hand tools. It just takes longer, you know, but a chisel and sandpaper and you can get the same results. You just need more time, that's all. I do a little touch up with a chisel and sand it a little bit, but I want this looking fairly rough because these are supposed to look like they've been made out of metal and, you know, I'm a little banged up here and there. So I'm just putting hammer marks in the top so it looks like a hammered piece of metal, not so much that you see all the wood grain. Guess I should have done this while I was tracing it the first time. Instead of going back and doing it. But these are the holes for the mounting, so I'm just gonna put quarter inch holes in there and it's done. Alright, there they are. They came out pretty nice. I like the hammered finish on those. And the belt that goes under here for the strap is an extra one I picked up when we made the scabbard video. I bought every belt at the thrift store that I thought I might want for a future project because they're so cheap. You might as well buy extra. And this one's almost identical to the one in the game on the shield. It's just that this is a bit more rectangular and the other one is a little more square. Other than that, it looks just like it. So that's going to go under there. And uh, we'll do that once we make the body of the shield. 
and that will be in the next video. So there is a lot of work left to do. Like I said, we're gonna be making the main body of the shield next video, and hopefully, if possible, I wanna wrap this project up in one more video. I know it's a lot of work, but I think we can do it. So one last thing before we go. Uh, we're gonna hit the 100,000 subscriber milestone on this channel, and probably within a month or so. So I'm pretty excited about it, and I thought we'd do another video, kind of like the show and tell we did a while back. If you remember, you guys sent me in the projects, things that you've made that you wanted to um, share with everybody. And so send me your photos and tell me a bit about what you made. You can email it to me at uh, happyadamirl at gmail.com. And we'll go over those in the uh, video coming up pretty soon. If you just have questions you want me to answer, I'll answer them in that video. Also, if you've already sent me photos of your project or a question and I've never responded to you, go ahead and send it again and I'll try and get to that in this um, upcoming video. So it'll be a good one. Send in your stuff and we'll pick some um, winners for the coolest projects that you guys have made and so we'll make it a giveaway things like that it'll be a fun video so go ahead and email your questions and send your photos don't send me mail me the actual project itself just photos of it is cool and uh, that's going to be it i'll see you guys real soon take care